have been trying to sound off the alarms for literally months going on years about the way in which we are reverting back to a thinness in culture and the way in which we are encouraging eating disorders and thinness above all else like we have been talking about that for ages now and what is wrong with that precisely thin is in meaning like people are gonna become healthier and healthier through the process of ozempic or maybe diet and exercise or other things like that I, I i don't necessarily see that there is an issue with that now i get your entire ideology literally uh is binging on the fact that you this is like believable for you like you know being fat is completely fine and being obese has no downward downward uh health effects or anything like that so i understand i do i do get it i really do but it's nothing but benefit. I'm not even seeing anything wrong with this in general. This is this is actually a great thing. But like I said, it's you know like this is their entire ideology. Like, can you imagine literally thinking something for your entire life, and then suddenly somebody slaps it out of your hand and goes, huh, "That shit was wrong for your entire life," and people had been telling you it was wrong for your entire life, and yet you still believe that it was wrong? You are literally retarded. But anyway, for I think what two three years at this point. What I need y'all to understand is that the consequence is not just going to be for fat people. Like, yes, we were hit first and we were hit the hardest, but this consequence- You would think that the gut, the extra weight, the obesity would have been the thing that hit the hardest. Not the failure to understand that the obesity was the problem. Uh, the b obesity wasn't the problem, sorry. But the fact that the, the weight on you in general is an issue. But I guess like these people are more- I guess like they care more about how people perceive them outwardly than they do about themselves in general because uh you would think that these people would do something about their health Th these people are, are perpetually walking around at like 40 or 50 percent body fat and then never acknowledging that they are literally on death's door consistently all times they're they're always complaining about all the problems they have with society and not being able to find clothes and things such and so forth but here they are still complaining about the fact that they have you know oh now we have to worry about thin people you know, wanting to be thin. Yeah, no shit. Everybody wants to be thin, including most fat people. Most fat people do not want to be fat. Not just going to be for fat people. Like, yes, we were hit first and we were hit the hardest, but this consequence is also going to be impacting thin people. And we Which is probably a good thing, right? Like, what was wrong with that? You're seeing it happen in real life, in real time. The way in which these trends impact the way that we view our bodies, like, as someone who is very confident and comfortable with my body, even I have been fighting these, like, ED thoughts because of the way- you're, then you're not comfortable with your body. That's just plain and simple. If you're sitting here and you're complaining that this 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 wave of people losing weight and taking weight loss medications or just bettering themselves in general is actually like getting into your psyche on what you should do in order to alleviate your obesity, then you are obviously not comfortable within your your mindset. I mean, now sometimes maybe if you're in a room of dudes and they're all like sucking each other off and you're, you're sitting there thinking about your heterosexual life, um, you might think about it for like a second, like, oh, maybe I could indulge, maybe I could, you know, lay my mouth down on that one, that one right over there real quick. It's not too big, not too small, just to see what all the hubbub's about. But, you know, even I would never have that happen to me. The fact that you're sitting here and you're going, maybe I should lose weight. Maybe ED, by the way, that's kind of insane. Like, you're not, you don't have an ED if you're just sitting there. Um, but by the way, these people will sit there and they'll say, oh, it's an ED because you're losing weight. That's not an ED. It's just called the calorie deficit. Uh, what you guys have is also an ED then, if that's the case. If you're gonna if you're gonna qualify somebody practicing a calorie deficit as an ED, then you yourself are also practicing an ED because you don't give a fuck what you eat in general. So your, your, your ED is literally just no restrictions in general, which is also um, a major problem. And so like you can't, you, you have no room to talk. You already take it up too much. I'm very confident and comfortable with my body. Even I have been fighting these like I just love that we have to qualify everything that we say, you know? Oh, yeah. You know, we were hit the hardest. You know, we did suffer the most. Uh, you know, I am comfortable with my body, and but it's always followed up with a but, you know, a big hairy but. But, you know, it does feel not so good, to be honest, that I'm, I'm sitting here and I'm dealing with all these issues. Uh, that I have to I have to work through now, um, but I thought you were comfortable. I thought you guys had a down back. I thought you guys were literally chilling at your you know 50, 60, 70, 80 percent body fat percentage and, and telling people no, we are the wrong ones. When everybody is losing weight, becoming becoming more and more healthier, and then you guys are just sitting there like, huh? I wonder if I should get healthy too. Like as someone who is very confident and comfortable with my body, even I have been fighting these like ED thoughts because of the way that our culture has brought back this whole thin is in movement this is not an issue with one individual person and their body and their appearance and their eating disorder it's not about that and that should not be the conversation y'all are having the conversation we should be having is about this rise in eating disorders and glorifying thinness in general no one 
What's wrong with glorifying thinness? You guys are literally, what, what is the alternative? Glorifying obesity? Literally a thing where that has nothing but detriments upon yourself? Uh, shouldn't we be glorifying people that are thin? Because we could celebrate things like walking and we could celebrate things like using your legs optimally and, and navigating in the world without having underlying health problems due to your obesity. And now you can totally sit there and go, but David, you're still going to have underlying issues even if you're thin. Yeah, but you're not going to have them associated with your weight. That's the issue. Like you're, what you're doing is like you're going to have the issues associated with being a human being, which is just like walking around, walking around in a very general sense, in a, in a very general sense, being a human being is like uh, being, uh, having a bomb in your chest at any point. Like it, it, you could just die at any point. Sure. But wouldn't it be better to not only like you have this bomb as an obese person, but you also have the extra bombs just placed around your body that at any point could just go off and they may or may not kill you, but they will 100% do irreversible damage to you. So wouldn't it be better to just eliminate those things completely and not have to deal with those extra things on your body that at any point could just destroy you? I guess not. Nah, I guess forget about that. We'll just completely sidestep that and focus on instead. Um, let's not address the individual's problem, but the group, which is always going to be uh, worse to address because the group mentality is almost never going to be like, you guys are never going to solve for group because it's, it's impossible. Like you guys are literally hive mind mentality. Is about this rise in eating disorders and glorifying thinness in general. No one wins when we are constantly, consistently craving and desiring thinness to a degree that it consumes our life. Like I feel like these people don't understand how normal people lose weight. Nobody is, nobody is like, I don't know, losing sleep or like going, I don't know, like thinking about themselves in this abstract uh, mindset of like, oh yeah, I have to pursue thinness at all costs. This is my entire life. Like I need to lose this weight. Like, don't get me wrong. I'm sure people are taking it past. I'm sure many people are taking it actively and they are doing that. But I would say the majority of people that are losing weight are doing it through the realms of like passiveness. They're choosing to go to the gym. They're making better lifestyle decisions. Maybe they're counting calories, but that's really like the, the, the biggest idea when it comes to losing weight. Most people are not like going to the gym nine times a day. Um, most people are just not eating like Cobb salads every single night, you know, d d breakfast, lunch, and dinner. No, most people are just making better dietary decisions and they're doing that frequently enough to where they're losing weight. That's it. Uh, but for some reason, these people think that people that lose weight are like Dwayne The Rock Johnson and they're sitting there eating like, you know, four or five meals a day and it's just chicken breast. And then like, I guess, uh, you know, cow nuts. And then also it, it, going to sleep for like four hours a night and then going to the gym for the rest. Consistently craving and desiring thinness to a degree that it consumes our life. Like, no As opposed to what? Like you do realize you're doing the exact same thing except you're doing it on the other end. You're just eating and you're consuming the consuming. Wins when we as a society focus so heavily on a pursuit for thinness, no one, no one wins. I just like don't know what will make you guys realize that, you know? I, I don't think you explain that in any good way at all. If you don't want people to focus on thinness, do you also not want people to focus on fatness? And of course, your 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 response to that would be, no, I don't think fat people are pursuing fatness to a very, very active degree. I agree with you. The same way that most people that are losing weight, I mean, they may be more active in the sense of like they're, they're thinking about it more like, oh, I have this weight on me. Now I need to get it off of you. Uh, but you guys are literally not even thinking about it at all. You guys are literally just sidestepping the fact that it's doing massive numbers to you. It's like ticking down your health bar. Like you guys are getting hit with critical hits every, you know, five or 10 minutes above your head. And you guys are just not even like acknowledging it at all. Like what, what, what would you like to do? What would you, what would you like to occur in this circumstance where thin is in and we get rid of it? Like just promote obesity or what? I didn't believe that the thin is in culture shift was real. Crutches and Spice just made a video about it and I saw it and I was like, no, we've made too much progress. Like it's not gonna go back to the way it was. Sin has always been in. And I'm here to say that I was wrong and I am now worried. It wasn't Kim Kardashian taking out her BBL. It wasn't the low rise jeans coming back in fashion. Did Kim Kardashian take out her BBL? Why? You wanna know what has me worried? The new line from Torrid. There was not one single model without a flat stomach we, we really step it up really, really far here to, to, to look at plus size models and go, they're not fat enough. Like these plus size models are fat, but they're not fat, fat. We need them to be big. We need them to be massive. We need them to be so massive that I need to be able to relate to them. I need to look at a fat model and go, that is who I am. I need representation for all the big belly bitches consistently out on, on the earth. I, where are we? Where this is even something you guys are arguing about. Um, 
Remember when we used to argue about realistic things and now we're arguing about uh, fat ladies not having big enough stomachs? Where did we go wrong? For their new line, Torrid, a historically plus size brand that goes up to a size 30, shared their new line for Y2K that only features thin women, which I'd already spoken about on Twitter. Th thin is pretty, thin is pretty stretching if you're gonna, if I'm gonna keep it a buck with you. I mean, maybe, mo uh, some of them are thin, some of them, but not, I mean, I saw a few bigger women I saw that woman right here. She kind of looked a little bit plump, a little bit. A little bit? No? Maybe I don't know what I'm talking about. I don't know, man. Whatever, Perfectly go ahead. Perfectly plus size brand that goes up to a size 30. Maybe they're just trying to, like, they are, people already know that Torrid is a plus size brand. Maybe they just want to get thin people coming in so they can also buy their brand too. But I see why they may not like that because if they do have thin people coming in, buying their stuff, then that just means that they're going to cater more to thin people. And then that just kind of has, the, the whole problem just re-arises over again because... The main issue is that mo a lot of plus size brands out there, uh, there's not a lot of them. And it's mostly all thin brands. So if you cater to thin people and then you realize, oh my God, we're getting a lot of money from all these thin people. Fuck the fats. Fuck the big backs. Fuck the big back belugas. Let's go ahead and just cater our entire brand to the thinnies because they're out here spending so much money on all our clothes. Why wouldn't we do that? Maybe that's the issue shared their new line for Y2K that only features thin women. What is Y2K, man? Which I'd already spoken like, about. Like, I know what it is, like 2000, but like, oh, I guess like it's a re-up on the year 2000? Uh, on Twitter, but it wasn't- It looked like Avril Lavigne in 2024. Until I saw the video from Crutches and Spice that it clicked for me, that there could even be a correlation. The most major plus size clothing brand in the country, if not the world, is effectively abandoning their consumer base and pandering to thin people, bad sign. Well, maybe they just want more money. That's probably what it is, right? They probably just want more money. They probably realize that you fat people don't shop as much as you guys claim that you do, even though you consistently all the time say, oh no, we will buy it. If you make good clothes, we'll buy it. They don't, <laughs> they don't, <laughs> they don't. Um, we see it time and time again, the amount of people that claim that if they make good clothes, they will come. They don't, they don't walk in. They don't buy the clothes. I mean, walking in general is kind of being a stretch, right? Uh, these big back belugas, buffaloes, are having a hard time walking in general. So going into the store, brick and mortar store is ridiculous. Uh, most of these people are shopping online. I shop online. You probably shop online too. Most people shop online for clothes. You could just send it back if it doesn't fit. Now, will the clothes come with bed bugs? Maybe. Who knows? It's a gamble, but that's the fun. You know, you open up the package, there may or may not be a brick in that shit. Who knows, bro? It's a gamble. That's what makes it so incredibly fun to open it up. That's why whenever I'm ordering something that's really, really expensive, I always set up my phone and record myself opening it because you never know. Okay, like if I open it up and there's a fucking brick in this shit and I ordered a $2,000 GPU, guess what, dude? You're not, you're not gonna tell me that this shit is my fault. It's not. It's your fault, Amazon or whoever I'm buying it from. So that's something I would recommend for anybody too. Whenever you open up anything really, really expensive, now if it's something like 5 or $10, like I get it, whatever, dude. You might want to bite the bullet on that one, but even still, maybe you want to record yourself. Record yourself opening the box and if they ever ask you, like, do you have evidence of you opening this shit? Yup, I do. I do. People already record themselves doing weird shit in general. You recording yourself opening up a box is really not that far-fetched at all. I recorded myself one time beating off for 35 seconds. That's fucking weird. Who the fuck is doing that? Like, if I told somebody 100 years ago and I said, hey, listen, dude, uh, what's the weirdest recording you ever saw? He'd be like, yeah, see? Yeah, see? I, I saw a woman's ankle in a, in a booth, and it was, oh, it really got me going, you know? It really got me going, you know? And I'd be like, yeah, I beat off to a camera. I beat my meat. 35 seconds and busted obviously it wasn't like you know i it was i was pre-beating before that to, so i got to the point where i was you know what i'm talking about. i didn't it uh, 35 seconds is light real light but if i'm being honest with you 35 seconds is pretty good for most guys uh you know maybe two or three minutes what guy is going for what yeah, listen dude some women nowadays talk about some i want to go for two hours who who are you two hours for what but what? You don't think I got anything else going on? You think my day is literally just you? Okay, fix yourself. Okay, work on yourself. All right, dude. Go stop scrolling TikTok uh, and worrying about whether or not I can bust uh, two hours later. I can't. That's ridiculous. That's crazy. No, dude. I'm not doing that. That's insane. Uh, you got maybe 30 minutes at most. But after that, um, nah, bro. And of course, like the preliminaries, uh, the foreplay before. I don't even know what we're talking about, dude. Whatever. Let's go back to the video. At people only. How do you understand the term midsize? Only 
people that I consider mid-size are people who exist in a mid-size between straight size and plus sizes. I love that we need a tutorial for this. Like we need this grandiose understanding because it's so incredibly ambiguous nowadays. And it is very ambiguous nowadays. Most people have no idea. When you say I'm mid-size, most people look at you like, what the fuck are you talking about, bro? What's your, what's your, like what? Like give me your actual size. What do you, small, medium, large? What's your, what's your pants size? Like in inches? What is it, bro? What are you, 40? God damn, you big, bro. Damn. Like that's usually what you hear. You don't ever hear somebody say I'm a mid-size. It's just ambiguous terminology to try to sugarcoat the fact that you're big as hell. And now, I do see a lot of people nowadays claiming to be mid-size that are actually big as fuck. That are people that are like two, you know, two, three hundred pounds over what they should be. And they talk about some, I'm mid-size. Just keep it a buck with yourself, okay? You're big. You got the voluptuousness. I understand it's not that favorable in society and things like that. But you put it upon yourself, okay? Represent it with all your might. Basically the area of like an XL to 1X. So right. XL to 1X, huh? Damn, that's pretty light. Damn, that's pretty light. That's not that much wriggle room, bro. Why? Damn, that's like a... What? Roughly maybe like a 10 to a 14, I think. If you are straight size. 10 to a 14, huh? Okay. I mean, I don't really understand women's sizes, so I guess I'll just take your word for it. Straight size. You're not mid-size. You're straight size. Straight size is like small, medium, large, that. Extended sizes are like XL, XXL, XXXL. So is that mid-size or you just said XL? Am I wrong? Is XL, XXL, XXXXXL? Is that not like 1X, 2X, 3X? Am I wrong? I thought that was just a, to get rid of the Xs. I thought that was a cool way to get rid of the Xs. Is that not what that is? Am I, am I just wrong on that? What the fuck? I, I thought for the longest time that if there was an XXL, I thought it was just a 2X because they wanted to get rid of the, all the Xs. Like at some point, you can't put too many Xs, right? Like how many how many times do you write extra? Like the entire point of writing XL was to get rid of the word extra. And then they were like, damn, this XXX, we kind of going really, really far. At some point, somebody's got to look at the, our, our clothing brand and going to think that a Vin D is a Vin Diesel movie or it's a pornography. And then... They were like, fuck it, let's just get rid of it and just put 2X, 3X. I thought that eliminated it. I guess I was wrong. Maybe I'm wrong because somebody let me know down below. I'm pretty sure that was, that's what that is, but maybe I'm wrong. Those aren't plus sizes. Those are extended sizes. I know. I did not know that, that XXXL. Because my, my, my best friend, he's in a 4X, so I guess he's not plus size. I guess he's just extended size. Who would have known? I mean, he's 250, but I guess, you know, hey, bro, he's not he's not plus size. Who would have known? I could tell him finally. Hey, bro, you remember those boobs that you had on yourself? Remember those love handles that you was growing off the side of your gut? You remember the time you were having a hard time walking up the stairs and you were saying that the doctor classified you as obese? Yeah. No, it just turns out you're extended, bro. You're not plus size. You're not fat. You're not obese. You're extended size, bro. It's great. It's amazing. You don't have to worry about it anymore, but you probably should get a couple bras, bro. That's You're going to need some support. And plus sizes are from a 1XL on. But for the okay. people who are in between a straight size and a plus size, that is the only people who I think should be calling themselves mid-size. Because if not, you already have a label that you should identify with. And if you're just like a medium or a large, like you're just- Why do we have random bedazzles around our eyes like this? So random, so weird. Why? It doesn't look good either. It just kind of looks weird. You're just straight sized. Ah, sorry. If you're a plus size girl who wants to work out but is restricted from some movements, try this. You could just lose weight, right? I mean, it's fine. I'm happy that there's a there's this Indonesian man or maybe Puerto Rican or maybe some type of Middle Eastern. I'm not really sure, actually. Very ambiguous. But I'm happy this ambiguously ethnic man is having a tutorial on how to do movements as a plus size person. That's... Cool. I mean, I'm happy. That's awesome. But shouldn't the end goal be losing weight so you could be more movable or yeah, whatever? Do you know how different my relationship to exercise would have been if this was the way that people spoke about exercising? You do realize that like having the weight on your body is literally a detriment to movement in general, right? Like you do understand that a 18 wheeler truck needs a lot more room to move than a sedan. You know that? You, did you not know that? Like did you not know that when you're bigger, it, it, in general, walking upstairs or participating in regular activities is going to be very, very difficult for you? So I, I get it. Like, your life would have probably been improved. But, like, by uh, why would you even go this far? Why would you even go far? Like, oh, yeah, my life would be so amazing if this and this and this occurred. Like, maybe, but maybe not. Who knows? But we do know that if you lost the weight, which you have not done, you have not done, 
your life would have been improved regardless. So I don't even understand you saying this. Like, my life would have been so much better if somebody told me that I don't have to lose weight to move myself. I could just move myself in different ways. I guess, but, you know, lo losing the weight would have been the optimal step. But go off, queen. I felt all my life, and growing up, exercise was a punishment for me. Something I had to do as a consequence of being fat. You try just to exercising in general is most of the time perceived as a punishment in the sense of like, I don't want to do this, but it's, it's more so like a postponing of goodness. If that makes any sense, like you're not getting, you're not getting any of the, uh, uh, the good stuff right away. You're getting it later on. So when you walk for days and days and days, maybe not seeing the benefits of that, but slowly but sure you're realizing, oh my God, wait, I can walk longer. My cardio is improved. I can have sex for longer. Maybe who knows, whatever you want to do. Um, or when you're late, when you're weightlifting, right? Maybe at first, all you can do is five pounds. Nothing. Hey bro, listen, is nothing wrong with doing five pounds. Uh, I start, you got, everybody got to start off somewhere, right? Um, and then realizing after a, a, you know, month, two months, three months, you start realizing, wait, I'm up to 15 pounds. I'm up to 20 pounds. I can bench press, um, uh, 100, 150 pounds. Like you start realizing you see the growth slowly, but surely. So you can count it as a, you can count it as like a punishment, but it really, all it is, is like, it's just growth over the long term, and n nothing that is worth Nothing, nothing feels as good as knowing that you're capable of a human being than it is to like be here just sitting on your couch all day and then realizing that you can't do anything because your body is incredibly, uh, you know, fucked in many, many different ways. But go off and fix my body. But you should, though. I mean, there is something wrong with you. That's a fact that there's nothing else we can say about it than that. I mean, I understand that you have like a nuanced way of looking at it. But if you said, no, I'm perfect the way I am or whatever bullshit you, you, you say to yourself can, to convince yourself that you're not a problem. Most people are going to look at you with their head turned and go, but you're fat, right? But you're fat, right? You're big. You got a lot of, you got a lot of weight on you. That's an issue, right? No, it's not an issue for you. You can't walk upstairs. Oh, you can walk upstairs. Oh, you can walk upstairs. How many flights? How many flights of stairs can you walk up? up? When you go into the Walmart, right? Do you sit down on one of those scooters or do you, oh, you do sit in the scooters, huh? It kind of seems like maybe you wouldn't do that if you weren't as big as you are, huh? That's just like what we should be talking about um in terms of fixing like you don't have to worry about the issues that you would have had if you were fat but i couldn't do everything my trainers wanted me to do because i wasn't in a thin body like you shouldn't have even had a trainer how can you imagine somebody being literally 400 pounds and getting a trainer why what are you talking about dude who how do you even have the money for that i know you grew up privileged what are you talking about dude i didn't even have a dad and you had a trainer growing up crazy bro so you got issues obviously with your body when you're growing up your parents should be the one that bestows upon you the the precedence of hey dude you're obliged to lose this weight your parents um they shouldn't be telling you about it they should just be doing it actively without exchanging words to you if that makes any sense um because you're a child you don't know anything so they're they're probably gonna be the ones that are like you know reducing the food or reducing the calories you know making maybe um, making you go work out more, having extracurricular activities, basketball, so on and so on and so on. Um, I don't think it's beneficial to be a parent and tell your kid that they're big bag belugas, but um, some parents do do that. I see that on I see that on social media quite a bit. It's actually really really sad, but that is something that happens quite a bit. But it is true. Um, when you're fatter as a kid, you you are literally just. It sucks. It really sucks, man. I've seen some of these fat kids that literally can't do anything. I remember literally being in elementary school and seeing fat kids that would just sit on the bench or like outside would go outside and there'd be like little seats that kids could sit on. These fat kids would just sit there. They couldn't do anything. They couldn't participate. They couldn't run around. They couldn't have fun. They couldn't do anything. They were just sitting there for the entire extent, which was like 30, 25, 30 minutes of the recess. And it's really sad because we used to make fun of them as children, 100%. And that's, it's just really sad, man. Um, don't let your kids become fat because it does set them up for a lifetime of failure. If you're fat as a child, you're fat as an adult. It takes very, it takes a lot of work to get that out of you. Then I was told that working out was supposed to be painful. And if it didn't hurt, it wasn't working. I was never given an alternative option. And obviously that contributed to me feeling really negatively about movement and exercise. It sucks. And maybe if I was treated like a human being, like a person. It's always like somebody else did this to me and all oh, because this happened. I can never do this ever again. How can you be a grown ass woman looking like you're literally 42 talking about some, oh, now I could never work out because I have a negative idea of what working out should be because it's supposed to hurt. How are you a grown ass woman? You know that you could Google how to, how to work out nowadays, how to figure out how to move your body in an optimal direction, how to lose weight. And you still talk about some, oh, I don't know, because 
guess what? Like my dad left me when I was nine, and now because of that, I don't know. And now, I, now I can't ever find women attractive. Like that's basically what I'm hearing. Like, what are you talking about, bro? You being a gr a grown ass woman, you have the ability to find out how things work, right? You do understand that, right? We, we we're not talking about you pre eighteen right now. We're talking about you post eighteen. We're talking about you where you are right now. It's your forty two year old self. You should have the ability. You should have the drive. To know how to do this shit. And the fact that you made this video talk about some oh boo hoo. Somebody somebody wanted me to work out when I was when I was 14. Now I can never work out ever again because they told me that when I work out it's supposed to hurt. What are you talking about? Grow the fuck up. How the fuck you make it to this old ass age and you never thought about Googling some shit? I don't feel bad for you. I don't feel bad. We all went through some shit, bro. We all went through shit, okay? I remember when I was like 14. When I was 14 years old and I was walking up into my school. They never, they never rock salted the driveways, bro. I don't know what the fuck they were doing, dude. They, they, the Boston public schools were some of the worst schools ever, dude. You would walk into the school. It would be blizzard. The, the walkway would literally be ice, complete ice. And I walked up on there and I slipped and I fell back on my ass. Everybody looked at me and said, ah, white boy David fell. What the fuck, bro? That's not my fault that I fell. There's ice everywhere, bro. That was embarrassing. But that never make that because that happened to me, that never means that I'm never gonna walk on ice ever again or go outside or like, you know, I don't know, bro. Like, because uh because I slipped on that ice, I can never eat York peppermint patties anymore. Like, what are you talking about? It's just a such it's such a bizarre thing. The fact that she's sitting here as a grown woman talking about something, I can never do this now. What are you talking about? Grow up. And someone had given me this option when I was younger, when I was a kid. My feelings well, You're an adult, right? You're an adult now, right? Right, right? Right? You're an adult now, so like what the fuck is stopping you from like working out now? What's stopping you from like losing weight now? Because you had childhood trauma. We all had childhood trauma, okay, bro? Like we all did. We all did, okay? Our parents suck. Exercise would be different. So I really appreciate the fact that people like this exist and are making exercise more accessible on TikTok. And every person that's ever been What are you talking about? These people have always existed. You just never seen them because you don't look for it, because you're too fat and you're too big backed to like actually Google anything other than what are the main ingredients in Wendy's new crusty crab crusty crab uh crabby patty. Like that's what you that, that, that that's that, I bet that's your entire your entire search history. I bet you don't even spend time on on TikTok. I bet I bet it's literally if we looked in your phone log right now, it'd be like Uber Eats and DoorDash would be like the number one most used apps on your shit. Like I promise. Like the fact that you're sitting here talking about some oh I, you know, like this is so great that there's somebody out here. Somebody? Are you crazy? You don't think he's only one person? You think it's one guy? That Middle Eastern ambiguous looking guy? That's it. That's the only guy you have on the entire TikTok platform. By the way, who the fuck is watching TikTok? Who the fuck is watching TikTok for workout advice? What are you crazy? Go watch some like go go on YouTube and go watch like Athlete X or whatever and find out a way to like tear your ACL. Read my comments saying I just need to work out to lose weight. You never actually. Care. You don't care about yourself. Don't talk about what I care about, bro. You don't know what I care about. First of all, dude, you, you got hopped the fuck all the way off me. That's kind of crazy, okay? Let me go ahead and put a condom off for all this dick riding you doing right now. That's crazy as hell. How the fuck you gonna tell me what I care about? Focus on yourself for a little bit. Seems like you focus on what everybody else did to you. How about you focus on what, what you're doing to yourself right now, okay? Let's, let's talk about that for one second. You're over here talking about some what I care about. You over here, grown ass woman. And you're over here going through, oh, I can't work out because I'm too fat. And it's really sad because I had to grow up. And somebody told me that it was okay to work out and it hurt. What are you talking about? Shut up. Shut up. Shut up. You got to do stuff sometimes as an adult that are going to suck dick. Okay? It is what it is. And the fact that you're sitting here complaining about this shit is actually super telling of what kind of person you are. I don't want to hang out with you. You just seem like you, you divert attention away from yourself so consistently. You never take accountability for your shit. And then also you have the, somehow you while, while diverting the attention away from you, you somehow manage to become a pick me even further. Person that's ever been rude in my comments saying I just need to work out to lose weight. You never actually care. I don't really listen. You don't have to work out to lose weight. That's actually not even the real technique to doing that. If you want to lose weight and you're serious, it should be calorie deficit 100%. And mm, it should be like calorie deficit 90% and working out 10%. And you, to be honest, you don't even really need to work out until you get to the end game. So uh, to be honest, where you are right now, you should be practicing calorie deficit. But I understand when people say, oh, you should work out. It's very easy for you to point to that because you know and I know that working out is never really going to solve any of that issues because you're eating 5,000 calories a day and you work out in the gym and you burn 300. That's really not going to do much because you're still in the net positive by like 1,700 or like 2,700. You've never cared if a fat person actually is working out or not. You don't actually care about. God, I don't care. Yeah, I don't care if fat people are working out. You're totally right about that. You're totally right about. It. You know what, man? You're, you're, you know the projection is paramount, but it's all good. People's health. You just want to be a bigot. Whoa, whoa, where that word come from, dude? Whoa. Person actually is working. Out. I'm a bigot, and you're just a big. Out or not? You don't actually care about how people's health. You just want to be a bigot because this is a person 
who actually cares. What? You saw one video of an ethnically ambiguous Middle Eastern man, and suddenly now you're convinced that that guy is like the Dalai Lama of the workout community? What are you talking about right now, dude? Like, you, what are you, what are you fucking talking about? How? How is that even possible, bro? You, you're so... <laughs> Shut up. Okay, just, just watch your mouth, all right? Watch your mouth when you make videos like this, all right? It's real disrespectful for my ears to be able to register what you're saying right now because, like, I understand what you're saying. And it's just, like, it's really, really disrespectful to my eardrums. You got to calm the fuck all the way down, okay? Reduce the cringe by about 44%. And then maybe you can make this video. I don't know how the fuck you, but t the fact that TikTok allowed this shit and they didn't like scan through the video and somebody didn't watch his back and go, oh, damn, that shit is cringe and just hit nah. They should have done that. But I guess the video went through anyway, so. And is actually giving real life advice to people who choose to want to do movement. And you're, you're stupid, dude. Most people that are serious about weight loss or like people that are like weight loss channels or whatever. You know what they're telling you to do? They're not telling you go to the gym and practice, you know, good movement or whatever the fuck. They're saying practice a calorie deficit. They're talking about understanding calories and calories in, calories out and macronutrients. That's what they're talking about. They're, that's, that's what they're saying. They're not saying you know, go to the gym and move your body in ways that feel good. What are you talking about? Nobody says that shit. You just found one video and this just confirmed your entire bias stream. Is allowing them to adapt movements that would work better for their bodies. Do you see how easy it is to not be a hateful bigot? Shut the fuck it's up. an individual's choice what they want to do with their body. Yes, it is an individual's choice to do what they want to do with their body. So why are you sucking that guy, sucking that guy off so goddamn extremely compared to another person giving actually solid advice compared to that guy just talking about some, oh yeah, here's some ways you can move while well, you're big as fuck. Like, I, it's the same thing. You just, you just like that more. So why would you even say that then? Okay. It's an individual's choice if they want to work out or not. You don't get to say what someone should or shouldn't do with their body. You don't, I don't, it's fine if you don't want to work out. It's fine if you want to move your body in a particular way. But, like, you have to acknowledge that's not really doing shit for you. Like, it might make you feel good, but so the fuck what? There are a lot of things that make somebody feel good. Like, if I, if I chose to do crack, I'm sure I'd feel fucking great. You know, if I chose to go to, like, circuit... If, I'm sorry. If I chose to go to Micro Center and, and show up, like, yo, with a whip it's... With a whippets, bro, I'm trying to smooth my brain tonight, boy. I'm trying to suck that galaxy gas until my brain literally leaks out of my head. I'm trying to suck galaxy gas until my left nut evaporates, bro. I don't want to think about anything for the rest of my life. That shit will make me feel so good. But that's not really doing anything for me, huh? Is it? It's not doing anything for me. In the same way that you talk about some, I want to do movement that I really enjoy, or I don't want to lose weight or whatever the fuck, you could sit there and you could say it makes you feel good. I'm sure it does. I'm sure. There are a million miles of pot pockets and all this other stuff. I'm sure it's great for your mouth. But is it helping you? No, it's not. But you can go ahead and do whatever the fuck you want. I don't even understand the point of making this video to talk about, are you going to suck and glaze that guy down uh, about how great it is that somebody out there, some ethnically ambiguous Puerto Rican guy uh, from from Indonesia is making a video about how to move your body as a fat person or whatever But you're not gonna talk about the fact that there are people out there that are actually talking about how to lose weight But you don't like you don't think losing weight is a good thing But then you sit there and you go people should be able to do whatever they want So if you think people should be able to, if you think people should be able to do whatever they want How can you then say that this guy is like amazing and beautiful and fantastic but the other guy that's actually helping people I'm sure this guy's helping too. I don't know. I, don't, I have no idea what that Korean guys talk about but it, 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 whoever is making their videos, it's the same thing. You just don't like the other ones. But this person is just giving people the tools that they need if they want to. Now they have access to that. Yeah, it's, it's great too because like here in my state, there's a few methadone clinics you can just go into and they're giving me the tools that I need to just become more of a meth addict, you know? Like and now I have another stream of, of drugs that I can do, man. This is, oh, it's just so great. I think that's really cool. I've never cool. experienced medical fat phobia firsthand. I just wanted to show you the following clip to give you a little insight on what this. I gotta call you out on your room. I gotta call you out on all the shit that I'm seeing in your background right now. Is that Drake? Is that Drake right there? Is that Drake? Anyway, <clears throat> I think Drake. Some of, some of Drake's music is pretty good. Um, some of it, not all of it. Um, you know. Black Lives Matter, but I got to call that out. It's terrible. Why? What do you have to do? How do you get that off your wall? You have to come with one of those like, you know, those, uh, I don't know what you call it. Like a big stick. It's a long stick that comes down as a triangle and you can scrape stuff up with it. I think a scraper. I don't know, but your room is terrible. Your hair is nice though. Standard of care is 
for treating fat people in America. Let's see. I'm sure Dr. Lyshen has mentioned this to you before, but... Should... They couldn't get an actual fat person, bro. That that fat person in the back looks like it's wearing a she, she's wearing a fat suit. She don't even really look that fat, to be honest. It's just like she's just holding a lot of weight in the face. It looks just, just like they just put a jawline extra on her. You know what? It's always so crazy to me that ladies have to come in there and put put their legs up on this shit, bro. It just kind of creeps me the fuck out, man. Because you know us dudes don't got to do that, right? Like, because we don't have vaginas. But uh, they do feel nuts. They do. And if it's sometimes, depending on who's feeling nuts, that shit is really uncomfortable. Uh, my doctors tend to be elderly gentlemen. Gentlemen that are past the age of about 65. And they come in cold-ass hands, bro. And they, they're balding. And they go down there. And whenever they go down there, I'm thinking there's a good chance I'm getting fellatioed because these guys have their mouth open sometimes and they go down there and they grab it and they go, what do you think about this? Like, what you mean? What do I think about this? What the fuck you talk about? Are you asking me what I think about your, your Hanley procedure? How about you start stroking and tell me what you, and then ask me what I think about. Pass. You're at a good age for it. I'm sorry. Think about what? Getting bariatric surgery for your weight. It's not healthy and that might be the most. Really? I don't think that um, Grey's Anatomy, is this Grey's Anatomy? I'm guessing this is Grey's Anatomy. I just don't really think Grey's Anatomy is the right place or like anything to really judge off of. Like, didn't they have seasons where dudes was like walking in with bombs in their chest and shit like that? Um, didn't they have seasons where like bridges were literally collapsing? Like I, at this point, I would be, I wouldn't even be surprised if like literally God walked in himself with like a gunshot wound because he needed to be healed or some shit like that. Like, I, I just don't really give a fuck about what Grey's Anatomy or any of these doctor shows on on TV really have to talk about because like they're not really centered in reality in any way. Don't get me wrong. I'm sure it's great drama. I'm sure like a lot of people find value in that shit, but like I just don't really look at it as anything other than that. Realistic solution. That's like that's like people that watch like pornography and going, this is realistic. This is totally true. Uh, yep, when a woman bends over, she has no idea what's even going on behind her. When she's bent over doing dishes or, you know, she's in the refrigerator looking for mayonnaise or whatever, you just come up behind her and she'll never know. She'll never know what's going on. Okay, um, but we didn't do like any blood work or anything today isn't that something that maybe you should no nah, we don't need that we're good you big i could tell before you recommend a major surgery i don't well she's just talking right now right she's just saying like hey you know maybe you want to look into this a little bit to do blood work to know that your overall health will be improved by losing weight true it's just a fact okay smaller body bigger life that's a good I like that actually well I i'm not interested in the surgery you just want to stay big Okay. Have a good day. And that is the rule, not the exception. What are you talking about, bro? Grey's Anatomy is the rule? Get the fuck out of here, bro. You're living in fairy tale land. <laughs> All the girls reading the part about the weight limit. Plan B is effective weight limit for is 150, 155, anything over that, you need two. You start crushing up like six of them, right? Just like, just crush them up, just, ah, oh, no babies for me. Your uterus just fall out, right? Hi, Planned Parenthood here, Card. everything. Um, don't take two Plan B. If you're over 150, 155 pounds, you need this. Um, yeah, um, and also fun fat fact, um, Ella really works if you're between 155 and 195 pounds, meaning if you weigh over 195 pounds, it's not really going to do much for you. It's just not going to be as effective. And that's the thing. This is when I say medical fat phobia actually impacts us and our lives. Bro, what are you talking about, bro? I'm sorry that the pill, I'm sorry that plan B is ineffective for people that are a higher body fat percentage. How is that medical fat phobia, dude? Uh, excuse me that's like somebody saying a motorcycle is like is this is this is fat phobic because my butt cheeks is too big to fit on it to fit on the actual seat what are you talking about right now that's like what like, where are you where are you in life where you're looking at shit like this and you're, you're blaming medical fat phobia you, you're literally lost at this point you're so far gone you can't even see yourself because there are no effective methods of plan b for women who are overweight just don't have sex i guess i don't know bro i i don't i don't ever really i've never okay i've had sex with one person raw that's it and i never did it ever again and i've been with some people for years and i never in my life didn't suit up before i went in because uh i don't want to have kids naturally yeah maybe not right now and also when i'm at that moment where i'm about to bust i always pull out because even if i'm in a position to where i could there's no benefit there's nothing that wouldn't you know it's just benefit to pull out either way right it's, it's regardless but 
Um, what do you what do you even talk about right now? Like the, 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 this 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 way you're looking at this is like so 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 far fetched. And this is just one example of how medical fat phobia. It's not even a good example. You're lost. Impacts us constantly. And God forbid you're in a situation where you need that pill, where you need that. God forbid you're in a situation where you need to lose weight. God damn. Using contraceptive. You were left out completely from the trials and they didn't make it for your body type if you were fat. I could be wrong, but I'm pretty sure there is a there's a plan B for people that are above a certain weight limit, right? Am I wrong? Somebody can let me know down below. And you do not have the same access to medical care that thin people have. How do you not see this as an issue? You don't have to be fat to understand that. Well, like, what are we supposed to do? Like, just wish upon a star and hope that there's a drug out there that can remedy fat people? Like, you guys are literally talking about this as if stairs aren't your arch enemy. And you're talking about stuff. There isn't enough plan B that work for my big body. Your body is so, in your body is ridiculously inefficient. And you're over here talking about plan B. How much should be talking about the gravity real quick? Like, let's take a second. Talk about gravity for a second. Let the gravity, let the gravity step in the room. Obviously, that's the only thing that's going to be able to step in your room. Fat people also deserve quality medical care. Yeah, but like, what are we supposed to do? Like, you got a genie or some shit like that? You know, Robin Williams genie and just have that motherfucker come out and just be like, yo, let me get a plan B for fat women. All right, guys, that's the end of the video. Uh, I hope everybody enjoyed today's video. If you did, uh, I appreciate everybody can leave a like, comment, subscribe, sharing the video, all those things I'd appreciate tremendously. And if you watch the video in its entirety and or you're here right now, leave it down below by typing in almond or whatever nut you like. I personally love nuts. Hold up. I like peanuts because they're my favorite types of nuts. They're the most generic. They're the cheapest in my opinion, right? Are they not the cheapest? I could be wrong on that. But I used to eat a lot of peanuts way back in the day. And I've recently been looking at some more peanuts I was thinking about putting in my mouth for a little bit just to have that shit glaze my lips because I do love them. I do love the salted peanuts. They're my favorites. And uh, I don't know. Let me know down below what you guys think about those things. But uh, anyway, I want to talk about something real quick. Uh, your hair is very well lubricated today. Very, very shiny. Very, very coarse. Very, very thick. Very, very non-dead end. It looks good. It looks tasty. It looks lubricated. It looks like you've been taking care of yourself. I really like that too, by the way. Very, very good trait in a human being to take care of yourself. I know a lot of people shit on it. Um, also, I want to call up the fact that I did have a McDonald's coffee today. I'm doing it. I'm doing it big today, guys. But you know what I want to talk about too also? Hear me up. Large. Look at the hole. Look how much gap there is, bro. That's the entire circle. That's the entire top part of my finger. That's an entire joint that's just missing. And these motherfuckers already charging me a bill, a solid bill. Keep in mind, this is like 230 if I didn't have the coupon on the app, right? And you over here charging me 230 for, for that? Bro, get your cups together, McDonald's, bro. You guys, it's just bean water. I know you dudes got that shit sitting in a pot for nine hours. Why are you acting like this shit's something special, bro? It's not. It's not. I know what I got, and you know what you got. It should not be worth more than a dollar. Uh, it's it's actually in, it's philanthropy for me to pay to, to pay a dollar. But the fact is, I'm getting a whole top finger missing when I'm getting my coffee. Anyway. We're gonna end the video here. If you enjoyed today's video, I appreciate it. Leave a like, comment, subscribe, sharing the video, all those things I appreciate tremendously. Uh, I think I already said that, but still, do all those things. And also, if you wanna check out my social media, it'll be listed down below. Enjoy the rest of your day, guys.